Greetings and welcome to Dokanguka Broadcast. My name is Chris Nikumana. Today is Thursday. For the last few weeks, I've been giving some advice to the parents who have children of age to be married. But at the end of last Thursday's broadcast, I started talking to the young people who are of age to be married. And I was telling them that they should marry someone who shares the same faith with them. Please note that I'm not focusing on religions or denominations. I'm talking about faith. You need to have some common beliefs. You may not agree 100% but there are some essential beliefs that you need to have in common. If you don't have the same beliefs, there will be a lot of strife in your marriage. Many married couples go through conflicts that are caused by differences in their character. They have different backgrounds, different ways of thinking and that can often cause some tensions. But if you don't have the same beliefs, it's a big issue. You should have the same faith. Some may say, my fiancé goes to a different church. But that's not the issue. Do you have the same belief? Maybe you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you love a girl who believes in something else. Maybe she believes in idols and she bows down before them. But you know that you must worship God in spirit and truth as Jesus said to the Samaritan woman. So you worship God in spirit and truth and you love a girl who believes in God but she believes in idols. She bows down to them. She believes that certain objects will protect her and she carries them around. If you don't share the same beliefs, there will be strife in your marriage. You need to understand this. Do you have the same fundamental beliefs? You may not go to the same church, but it's very important to have the same beliefs. That's the very first condition you need to meet. But once you're married, you should attend the same church. I've noticed that there are many couples who attend separate churches. The husband goes goes to one church and the wife goes to another church. But this will lead to many problems, especially once you have children. Your children will be confused. They won't know where to go. One will say, I'm going to daddy's church. And another will go to his mother's church. So you go to different churches that have different beliefs and it's causing a lot of confusion in your family. The children will be confused. They won't know what to do. But you should be united. The word of God says that a man will live his father and his mother and be joined to his wife and they shall become one flesh. Becoming one flesh means that you are also united in spirit. Your souls are united and you share the same beliefs. And when you have children, you raise them together in the same faith. The children need to see that dad and mom go to the same church. They need to see that you share the same faith and you have the same spiritual family. If you live in the same house and you attend different churches, Certainly we use that to bring strife in your marriage. I've seen many marriages fall apart or they experience a lot of hardships because the husband goes to one church and the wife goes to another church. The children are confused and they don't know where to go. Some of them just stop going to church. They stop praying. They stop believing because they don't see unity. But Jesus always focuses on unity. If there is no unity in the family and there is no spiritual unity, the children get confused and you are opening a door to Satan. You need to be one. You need to be united. You need to have the same beliefs. You need to speak with one voice. You need to raise the children with the same principles so they can grow up with the same faith. And later on in life, they can make their own decision about the church they want to attend. But when they are still young, they need your guidance. And you need to be united as you raise them. The children will make their own choices once they are adult. They will choose which church they want to attend. They will choose their own beliefs. But when they are still young, you need to learn from their parents. They need to be raised by their parents in unity. So if you are a young man and a young woman who are planning to get married, you need to understand that you must build your marriage upon a foundation called Jesus Christ as it is written in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 11. In everything you do, you must build on Jesus Christ. If your marriage plans are not built on Christ, it means that you are building on sand and your marriage can easily fall apart. God willing, I will explain this in more detail next Thursday.
now in the teaching portion of the broadcast and we are going to continue the teaching called prayer and supplication this teaching started on monday and yesterday we were discussing a very important topic i gave you the example of a judge in a court of law when you go before a judge you typically need the assistance of a lawyer because you don't know the different articles of the law but if someone who has studied law needs to go before the judge he can say that he doesn't need a lawyer because he already knows the law he doesn't need any more to speak on his behalf I remember several years ago when a former French president was on trial. He chose to represent himself because he had studied law and you could tell that he was defending himself very well and he knew what to say because he had studied law. But if you go before the judge, it doesn't matter if you are telling the truth. If you don't know the law, you can easily fall into a trap. The law is not flexible. You can't walk your way around it. That's why you need someone who knows the law so he can speak on your behalf. If you don't know the law, you must hire someone who has studied the law so he can assist you. He will stand next to you when you face the judge. And when the judge asks you a question, your lawyer will answer on your behalf or he will tell you what to say. He has to give you advice because even if you are telling the truth, even if your house or your money was stolen, even if you have suffered injustice, you can still lose your case because you don't know the law. As I told you yesterday, the word of God says that we have someone who speaks on our behalf. We have an advocate who is called Jesus Christ and he knows the law. The book of Hebrews says that Jesus is the high priest. But Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25 says that Jesus intercedes for us. He is able to save all those who come to God through him because he always lives to make intercession for them. In other words, Jesus speaks on our behalf. 1 John chapter 2 verse 1 says that Jesus is our advocate. He speaks on our behalf because we pray in the name of Jesus. That's why Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25 says all those who come to God through him when you pray you are drawing near to God. If you come to God through Jesus then you have a powerful advocate. Jesus speaks on our behalf. Before you can present your case before a judge you first meet with your lawyer and you give him as much information as possible about your situation. You have to give him all the documents he requests in order to beat your case. The lawyer will speak to the judge on your behalf. He will tell the judge what you said to him. So when you make supplications, you speak and Jesus brings your words before God the Father who is the judge. Sometimes our words contain some mistakes, but Jesus corrects those mistakes and he brings them before God without any errors because he knows what we should say. We are often not sure about what to say but you should speak to God the Father in the name of Jesus and you need to understand how you should make supplications. So what is supplication? Supplication is based on promises. When a lawyer is pleading your case before a judge, everything he says must be based on the law. Everything you say must be in accordance with the law of the land. When the lawyer speaks to the judge, he often calls articles of the law. He often says such and such articles says this and this other article says this and the lawyer for the opposite side will say no you're wrong this article says this so all their arguments are based on the articles of the law but when it comes to us we don't base our supplication on the articles of the law of the land we base our supplication on the word of God because our law is the word of God we stand on the word of God we stand on God's promises God willing tomorrow I will show you that when you make supplication you must stand on God's promises that's the key I explain this in more details tomorrow may I am bless you I wish you all a great day if you want to repent or you transformed by these teachings you can contact us by sharing your testimony in order to edify other listeners by contacting us on plus two five six seven eight one three seven seven three three seven.